Shuna, a great servant of God, a man who in 25 years has built from scratch a great church with serious membership and branches all over the world. <laughs> Reverend Cathy, I come with my family to say pole, to assure you of our prayers and solidarity in this very difficult moment. We have come to say that this great man lying here has left a very enduring legacy, a legacy, Reverend Cathy, that you must build on. You are now the vision carrier of JCC. And I'm sure this great man lying here, having been your very strong and close companion, must also have been a great teacher to you. I'm sure I have no doubt in my mind that as he was struggling with illness, he must have thought through about the future of this church and taught you and gave you teachings on how to lead, how to be a team leader, and how to be now the vision carrier of this great institution. Bishop Mark Karioki said he is a simple preacher. I'm, over, I'm also a very simple man. <laughs> and uh, many people have a problem with my simplicity to a point where they even call me a villager because of being simple. But I think it's good to be simple. Why do you want to complicate life with so many serious things? The history of this bishop is one of simplicity. From the slums of Kariobangi to the international stage all the way to America. And uh, the fact that you are simple does not mean you shall not be great. There will be greatness based on simplicity. Listening to the eulogy, of course I must admit, because I'm a truthful man, <laughs> that the great pastor from the U.S. who read the eulogy, I only heard a quarter of it myself. <laughs> and I'm sure we are many. But most of you are not truthful enough to admit. <laughs> you know, I, <laughs> I, I, I heard about spiritual intellectual capital. Who's that? It's very serious business for me. <laughs> and I trust the few people employed by government to help me around. You have heard, so you do some research. Simplify it for me and come and tell me <laughs> what it is all about. Bishop Mark Karaoke quoted from the scriptures that you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. We have heard and we have followed the leadership of this great general lying here. This man liked the truth. And truth is very enriching. Most Kenyans don't like the truth. Most Kenyans are dishonest. And many Kenyans have a problem with the truth. But since it is in the Bible, we shall continue telling them the truth. Even if they don't like it. In my local language, they say, Mako nyora edoro. The quinine for malaria is very bitter. But it's the only quinine that cures what? Malaria. Bitter as it is. So we must continue to being truthful. And that is why I want to salute the courage of Magua, 
the brother to the deceased for standing here to say that he has been an alcoholic and because his brother is gone, he wants to honor him by quitting alcohol. That is courage. That is courage. In the beginning of dealing with a problem is accepting that there is one. Once you acknowledge you have a problem, 50% of that problem is sorted. And then you deal with it. And that's where we are as a country. And I want to ask our leaders, let us not run away from reality. Let us not bury our heads in the sand. Let us accept that we have challenges as a nation. Once we accept we have challenges, we are done with 50%. And then we can look for solutions by accepting that we face a challenge. The challenge of illicit alcohol and drugs in this country is real. And many people want to run away from reality. And the admission of that great son here tells us that as a country, we must face head on the challenges before us. When we came into leadership with the President William Ruto, we found a very serious challenge of illicit alcohol and drugs in the entire country, and most specifically, and in a very big way, the Mount Kenya region. And we have been dealing with that problem